You know, this river's been in my life for 53 years, and uh, as I was saying a little bit earlier, you know, it's therefore all the seasons of my of my life have been uh, 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 have related to this in one way or another. Um, when I was a kid, first came up here, I was a kid and uh, fishing with salmon eggs the way, the way everybody did. Right. And uh, then as I got uh, I got older, why uh, the, the guy that actually taught me uh, how to cast a fly. Uh, lived in my hometown, Berkeley, California, and lived across the street from me. And he used to uh, uh, he used to make Winston rods. He'd buy the blanks and he'd wrap them and put the butts on them and all that. And so he'd often come out and practice casting on his lawn. And uh, I came home from school one day and, and stood and watched him. And uh, he uh, he invited me to uh, to try it. And of course, it's like everybody, the first time you try something like that, it's pretty wild. But uh, I. Uh, uh, you know, I, I came often enough to be able to cast, and then he brought me up here first in 1949. And then we started coming up once a year after that. And uh, at that point, I really wasn't a fly fisherman, even though he had showed me how to cast. You know, I, I fished pretty much exclusively with salmon eggs and a spinning rod, you know. And then uh, his wife died in, uh, I think it was 54, Cal lost his wife. And uh, so he bought to uh, a property just though maybe a half block down the street and uh, moved up here and, and decided this was going to be his new home so I, I'd come up and visit him and uh, we at that point I was beginning to kind of transition over and in, into fishing with flies and always loved the river and wanted to be part of it and uh, then what happened is that uh, Cal needed some flies died so he uh, got a hold of a guy named Ted Fay and, and Ted Ran a motel up here on the just about where the uh, uh, freeway entrance is, and uh, was uh, was basically uh, uh, kind of making a living that way and running a grocery route. But he fished every time he got a chance, and uh, sometimes he'd take people who were staying in the motel, and because he knew I liked to fish, a lot of times he'd uh, uh, he'd just come by and honk the horn in the pickup truck, and you know and I'd run out and jump in the truck and away we'd go. So he taught me how to fish with the, with, with the wet flies, which is now known as the kind of Ted Fay method of short line nymphing. The Ted didn't originate this. Uh, uh, this really came from a couple of other people here in town, Arnold Aranya and a, uh, a guy named Ted Towndolly. Ted was a, a Wintu Indian who grew up in the, uh, on the rancheria down at Sims. And remember when he, from when he was a boy that the, uh, uh, that the squaws down there would tie up a, a fly by just wrapping uh, black yarn on a hook and getting some kind of a little hackle on it because they didn't want to bother to dig worms. Right. So, uh, so he and Aaron Laragna who worked for SP and another fellow who owned a garage down on Sacramento Avenue named Ray, Ray Tillotson, he was just down there about a block too, uh, all got into fly fishing uh, uh, with these flies and they, they perfected their technique which was very much short line nymphing in the true sense of the word. I mean, when I we fished with two flies. Actually there were about four patterns but for, from the early spring through the summer and into the fall we fished with a uh, black bomber which was, you know, a weighted black fly with a gray hackle on it, and a uh, uh, and a burlap bomber, right? Which was uh, tied on a on a dropper loop. We actually tied them so the dropper hung down, it wasn't attached the way we do it now. And uh, and those were good old days for fishing, you know. And uh, uh, and it, it was, you know, it, it, at that point and for many many years in my life, coming here was kind of an annual event. And I never even really realized, you know, how much I was taken with the experience. I got into whitewater paddling in 1964, and uh, uh, really that became, you know, the passion of my life. And I ran all the big water, and, and I raced quite a lot. And, and it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I raced both slalom and wild water, and actually did pretty good nationally with the uh, with wild water racing. And then, uh, uh, and then a guy came along one day, and as I was saying down at the house the other night, said, uh, there's a canoe race coming up. Why don't you get in the front of the canoe? You know, you always paddle that damn boat down the river pretty well with kayak paddle. And I didn't.
know a heck of a lot about it, but we won the race. And uh, and so then he, he wanted me to really start training with him, and, and, and I did, and that became a, a big focus in my life. But I always came here, and uh, we I would uh, I would bring a, a, either a, a Marathon C1 or a kayak up here and train on Lake Siskiyou in the morning, and then go fishing in the afternoon. All that time, I, I came to love the river and know more and more about it, so, you know, know all the places and, you know, that, uh, that were uh, that were really uh, special to me, you know, over and over again. So they became something that I really anticipated coming up to be part of. And there came to be a point in the in about the early 1980s when I uh, uh, I got disenchanted with it because there there seemed to be so many people all of a sudden, places that I'd always gone to and I always walked away, you know, to get away from people all of a sudden began to have people in them and I got kind of frustrated with that and for a period of about uh, four or five years I, I kind of let fly fishing go but I never stopped coming up here and I'd hike and uh, uh, swim in Lake Siskiyou and, uh, uh, and do, uh, uh, do different things with uh, uh, just the back country you know sometimes I just kind of like four wheeled it into here or there. So Betsy wanted me to meet Wayne and, and uh, when my uh, uh, my ex-partner and I were uh, up here one time, we came in and met him. He'd never fly fished before uh, and uh, didn't know very much about it at all. I took him out and scouted the river with him. Then got into it again because uh, uh, because Wayne was up here right after the spill. And uh, again, got the passion of fishing. But more and more what, what began to surface and come up is the experience of the river. And more and more, it became uh, uh, it became important to me. Uh, maybe because I wasn't paddling anymore, you know. And you put the paddle and you feel the, the the water on your on your blade, you know, and have a sense of the power of the waves. And as time has gone on, I find myself more and more often simply reeling up the uh, 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 the uh, leader and hooking the fly in and setting, you know fixing up my rod like I, I was going to walk away from the river with it and just sit on a rock and watch and listen. Last night I was doing that and it became a, a kind of an experience of, uh, uh, of being in an altered state, which it usually does. You know, it just takes me away from the chatter in my mind. But then in the, uh, at some point, I wasn't even aware of when it started, it was almost like a movie uh, uh, turned on and I was remembering, you know, remembering fishing at this spot and remembering Cal, the old man, and uh, going out with Ted. And uh, we re I was uh, here when Joe Kimsey came out of the uh, Air Force. I was at Ted's house the night he tied his first fly. But more and more now, and it's, it's, it's a truly spiritual uh, thing for me. And uh, the fishing, I, I caught fish last night, and that's fun, but it's much less. I, I would almost rather the fish get off. Rather than rather than have to play them, you know, I've been been in a kind of a moral dilemma with this because you know it's uh, it's questionable uh, uh, as to whether we, you know, it's an ethical thing to do to take a living thing and torture it for your own pleasure, almost to its death, you know. And so I I've, I've been troubled by that. And uh, it's not tough to extend that argument. You have to. Yeah, yeah, and I. And I have to confess that I, I guess the humanist being what it is, I haven't been able to let it go, you know. I still come back up here and I still go fishing. Ted was a tremendous character, uh, a tremendously high energy guy, uh, uh, would take off and tell me over and over again, boy, you don't make more than three casts in a spot. And if you put, you put that fly where it's supposed to be, they'll take it on the first one. So he said, boy, you got to think about rhythm when you're fishing. He said, you don't go to a pool and just fish and fish and fish. You're covering water. So you got, and that's exactly what he did. And he taught me about waiting. He said, when you come up to a piece of water, you're looking as you come up to it. What's my route in here? Where are the seams? And you're moving right into it, right? You, uh, 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 you always got to watch waiting and, and casting at the same time, because a lot of times you slip and miss the cast, and you don't want the fly to go in the wrong place. Uh, and that was all with two flies, <laughs> and and we would have uh, we would have some dry flies like a gray half or yellow and a, a, a and a mosquito and two or three things like that that we'd use you know when it was really late. And he made up a fly he called an Adams, which didn't look anything like a like an Adams. I at think all. about it now, not how I'm going to fish. I think about what I'm going to see.
what I'm going to feel and experience when I get there. You know, and you know, we're, uh, we get to be a, of a certain age, you know, and you know, I'll be 69 in, uh, uh, in uh, September. You know, I, uh, I guess every day's a gift. You know? There's that great line from the Grateful Dead, you know, uh, sometimes the light's all shining on me and other times I can hardly see. Right. Lately it's occurred to me what a long, strange trip it's been. Yeah. And that's, and I guess the, uh, uh, the trip's a little less strange right. if you connect to, to things that are real. And uh, the river is totally real for me. I think there's another thing too. I think we, we, we come and find ourselves in a place. And, and it's that, it, th that act of finding ourselves and, the, uh, and uh, really experiencing that connection that keeps us moving with that experience and, you know, you just go deeper and deeper. It's kind of like layers of the onion. Now, I, f I was lucky enough to, uh, Ray Tillotson uh, uh, knew the old man, so he took me out several times and uh, he was one of the original old timers. And then uh, Ted Towndolly uh, uh, took me out fishing once, and he was, he was a typical, you know, uh, Native American thing. You know, we we just didn't talk. I just walked along behind him, and you know, and then and then he'd walk on to the next one, you know, and then I'd catch a fish and go. <laughs> we go up to the next one. But more and more, it's the experience of being out, experience of being here. Everything we have in our that that is real to us is in the moment. There is nothing but this moment. We don't allow ourselves to live in it. We live in future time or past time. One of the wonderful things the river does is it brings me into the moment. You know, and and I am truly there. And uh, I remember the wonderful line from uh, "A river runs through it." You know, that uh, I'm uh, uh, I'm standing in the water and casting with the three count rhythm or whatever it is and all of a sudden everything flows together and that's what it was like last night all the memories mixing with the with the experience of the water and, and the feeling of it and uh, I was more and more centered more and more peaceful calm all those things <laughs> gotta make the right sign. Okay guys, so you go fishing this afternoon?